How's it going everybody and welcome back to our Switch Weekend. Today we are going to talk about 5 amazing indie games on the Switch, in no particular order. These 5 indie games are some of my favorites, that's not saying that other Switch indie games aren't any less fun, it's just that I don't have a lot of funds. So there are a few that I can get my hands on at the moment, and a few that I've really enjoyed. Alright, so getting into it, first off we have Stardew Valley. Now, I know I can't do much justice to this game that's not already been done. Stardew Valley has millions of downloads over almost any platform. Kinda like the indie Skyrim, but not in the quote unquote multiple remasters. So in Stardew Valley, you play as a farmer who got tired of the humdrum of life and decided to move into the country. So you take care of your overgrown farm that your grandfather has given you and you need to make it thriving again. You befriend quite a few different NPCs that all have their own unique personalities and you learn their backstories. I myself have easily put over 200 hours into Stardew Valley and every time I come back I easily put another 20, 10, 20 more before I realize I've wasted a whole day in Stardew Valley. The main thing that I really enjoy about Stardew Valley is the fishing and the exploring of the mines. Combat isn't that intense, but it's still really enjoyable. All in all, I would probably give Stardew Valley an easy 5 out of 5, top favorite indie game that I have. But let's continue before I make this whole video about Stardew. Next we have my time in Portia. Portia? Portia? Portia. Whatever. My time in Portia is a lot like a 3D Stardew Valley. Except, instead of your grandfather's farm, you've inherited your father's workshop. Now, Portia is not as polished as Stardew Valley. Most notably, the movement feels really clunky, and a lot of things you do have a set time limit to complete them, and sometimes the music drops in and out and can have really long loading times. I'm currently editing this script as it is loading just to go into my house. The romance could do with some sprucing up, but it is a lot like Stardew Valley. You give your romantic, romantic interest some gifts, you talk to them, and they start to like you. But in Portia, it goes one step further, and you get to take them out on dates. Dates aren't really that much fun, mainly just button timing and picking random dialogue options. My time in Portia has, some, has a really big map, which there's not much to do but farm materials for your builds, which can be a little frustrating because they don't really tell you what drops what or which dro which dungeon you need to go into to get what item. And sometimes it takes a really long time to get there. It's kind of remedied by using DD stops that you have to build later on in the game and there's frequent crashes. But all in all, I'd give my time in Portia a, a solid 3, maybe 3.5 out of 5. Next up we have Forager. Forager is a 2D open world game inspired by exploration, farming, and crafting games such as Stardew Valley, Terraria, Zelda, those style. In Forager we play as an oddly shaped blob that has been plopped down into a strange small world where you forge a one by one block until you get enough money to unlock the new area and then you start building up a base that has different machines that either make stuff for you or upgrades your existing equipment. There are a lot of different biomes to explore, like the fields, the desert, ice, the red biome, and then we have the dark biome where all the uh, skeletons and everything spawn. There's also some puzzles to solve and people to talk to, but they're really not that interesting, mainly just fetch quests. The real beauty of Forager comes in, well, the foraging and combat which takes up most of your time. But with a name like Forager, what do you really expect? All in all, I would probably give Forager a 4, 4.5 out of 5. I think that'd be a solid rating. The one downside to Forager is though is, take a listen to this. It can get pretty loud. Enter the Gungeon. What else can I say? When enter the dun the gungeon dropped on I mean I'm having a hard time not trying to call it dungeon. When entering the gungeon dropped on Switch, I immediately snapped it up, and then I realized that I'm not really good at shoot 'em ups. 
I mean, I can't even make it past the first level. But I do like to play it from time to time. Enter the Gungeon is a bullet hell crawler, following a band of misfits seeking to shoot, loot, dodge roll, and table flip their way to personal absolution by reaching the legendary Gungeon's ultimate treasure, the gun which can kill the past. Select a hero or team up in co-op and battle your way to the bottom of the Gungeon by surviving a challenging and evolving series of floors filled with dangerously adorable gunhead and fearsome Gungeon bosses armed to the teeth. Gather precious loot, discover hidden secrets, chat with opportunistic merchants and shopkeepers to purchase powerful items to gain the edge. Oh, did I mention it was multiplayer? Not that I really can talk about the multiplayer aspect of the game since I really don't have that many friends, but I can guess it's just as frustrating as a solo, so yeah. Overall, since I'm not a huge shoot 'em up fan, I would have to give Enter the Gungeon just for general gameplay, I'd, I'd give it a, a 3.5, maybe a 4 out of 5. And last but certainly not least, we have Moonlighter. I have followed Moonlighter for quite some time and I was super excited when it dropped on the Switch. Moonlighter is another one of those, you took over a shop from a dead parent or relative or something and you're forced to dungeon crawl through 5 procedurally generated dungeons to gather materials to sell at your shop. As you progress the game, you slowly unlock other shops in town that help you along the way. Like a blacksmith that helps you build new weapons and armor, or a witch that helps you brew new potions. One of the big aspects of Moonlighter is the dungeons that you explore have a big mystery surrounding them that you will uncover. All in all, Moonlighter is an amazing game that I'll easily give a 5 out of 5 stars. Definitely a must play if you like shop sims with dungeon crawling aspects. Now that's about it for the list of 5 indie games on Switch that I have really loved and suggest you to play. Now, what you should do is sit back, buckle up, go check out some Switch games and get ready to lose some sleep. Make sure to subscribe for more and have a fantastic weekend or whatever day you're watching this on.